one. So I want to do a video on how a centrifugal or centrifugal concentrator works because I've been using this icon. There we go. Ooh, that's bright out here. I've been using this icon here a fair bit in my videos. You've seen it. You've seen it used in half a dozen or more videos so far, and I'm not sure if all of you kind of understand what it actually does and why it is so good at fine gold recovery. Why we use a centrifugal or centrifugal concentrator when we're doing specifically hard rock, but we can do it for plaster. Uh, when you're dealing with that micron, that tiny, tiny, tiny gold. So today I am going to give you guys a bit of a rundown of how this icon, the icon I-150, actually works and what all of those strange components on it do and why it's so effective. At least that's the plan. Centrifugal concentrators are also known as gravity concentrators because they, f they create an artificial gravity that is way, way, way higher than normal gravity is. And that's why they can capture gold, just like a sluice box or any other um, gravity separating device separates gold from sand using gravity. Well, a centrifugal or gravity concentrator creates an artificial high gravity that separates the gold. Now let's start with a general breakdown of the whole machine. Obviously there's a great big canister, a great big base to the whole thing, and that houses the, the tub inside that spins fast, plus all of the discharge for the tailings and the discharge for the cons. That's all inside that big tub. Up on top there is the big electric motor that spins everything really fast. And there is the plumbing that brings the water into the machine, keeps the pressures right, valves and whatnot to keep the pressures right, and keeps water flowing through it. We also have the plumbing that brings in the material that's being processed, the processing material, into it from whatever is feeding it, in this case, the impact mill. A few electronics here, on off switches and whatnot to start up and shut down the machine, and then the high frequency controller. This is the thing that controls how fast the machine spins, and we can spin it up, spin it down, control it with the controller. So that's just basically the breakdown of what is involved here in the machine. But how does it all work? Before I break down all the components and what they actually do, let's talk about centrifugal concentrators in general. I, I said that they are gravity concentrators or high gravity concentrators. What they do is they spin up the drum that's inside really fast. There's the drum inside. Right there. They spin that drum up really fast and create a centrifuge. The centrifuge forces the material that's inside the drum, the processed material that go, that's going through it, forces it against the outside edge of the drum really hard. And there's the artificial gravity we talk about, forcing it to the outside of the drum really, really hard. Now, in this case, in the Icon I-150's case, it's about 150 times regular gravity that it's being pushed against that outer drum. That force acts on gold much more than it acts on the rest of the rock because gold has such a high density. It's so much heavier than the rest of the rock. That gravity reacts or acts on it so much more. And because of that differential, the high gravity in there forces the gold out into those grooves you see there into the bottom of those grooves where the rest of the material won't fall to the bottom and the water flowing through this when it's spinning washes it over the top edge. Now that's the theory. I'll explain a lot more of that and how the workings inside here work a bit later, but that's the theory. It's a centrifuge 
that forces the material into those grooves. Now, the Icon I-150 is one of the smallest uh, gravity concentrators that Sepro makes. They do actually make one smaller little laboratory one. But they are famous for their Falcon concentrator, their big ones that big mines use. This is more of a small artisan mine, or is it artisanal miners type thing, or a small scale mine operation. In my case here, we're using it mostly for sampling because we're not running through huge volumes, although it can take about two tons per hour. Let's talk about some of the components. Well, the start stop switch seems fairly basic. You hit the green button, it starts the whole operation. Hit the red button, it stops the whole operation. Now, when you do hit the green button, it sends a signal off to the high frequency controller here. I don't have it powered on right now because the generator is just so loud. And this controller here, I have set to, oh, about 45 hertz, which means the motor here is spinning about 900 RPM. It can go up to 50. Uh, I found that my machine, just because of the way I have it mounted and whatnot, has a bit of a vibration at 50. I knocked it down to 45 and got rid of the vibration. It's working really nice for me at that. So you hit the green button. It sends a signal up to this guy that uh, does all the, you know, smarts, gets the frequency just right. It sends off the pulses to the drive, the motor here, and starts spinning it up at the correct speed. The motor starts spinning, 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 which in turn is attached to the drum inside and starts spinning this drum. Which is fairly fast. Now before I continue talking about what's happening inside that drum, we better talk about water a little bit here. We have the machine attached to a water pump coming down from the river into our pond, back from the pond into here, all that kind of stuff. We have it attached to a water pump. We have a water source which brings water into the machine. Ooh, down through this, in, through the pipe here, down into, let's start, talk about this component here. This is a filter. This makes sure that the water coming into the icon is very clean, very, very fine filter. And it needs to be cleaned fairly frequently because it's such a fine filter. We clean it about once a day. From there, it goes up into the manifold, which splits it off into two. Both of these lines go back into one, which seems very odd, unless you know exactly what's going on here. The machine always needs water pressure coming through its jets. So you set one valve to maintain a, low, uh, uh, a constant low pressure. We always have water pressure going through because of one valve. The other valve you turn on, and it's the one that you adjust the high pressure. You get the pressure in the machine up to what you want, about 10 to 15 PSI. And that's the processing water. When you go to rinse later on, you turn the processing water off, but because the machine is still spinning, you don't want to stop all the water. That's why this valve keeps water going to the rest of the machine. And that prevents gold particles from falling back through the water ports. But we'll, we'll talk about that later. Anyhow, two valves to keep the water flowing into the machine. From there, they go up to a gauge that tells us our pressures. From there, they go into this crazy bearing that actually directs the water down through the core of the motor. The main shaft is drilled out, so the water goes down through the core of the motor, through this funky bearing, and then comes out, yes, back into our drum. That's why we had to take a pause from our drum there a second ago, because we had to t tell you how the water got there. And one more pause from the drum, because there's one other thing that is being added to that drum to make this whole process work, and that is our material. Well, in our case, we have the impact mill there crushing down our stone into a bit of a hopper here, and then it gets fed into the icon from there through this pipe. Now, the slurry, yes, we've got water. Oh, let me show you this, my main water coming in. We split off one line that goes up to our crushers and keeps water flowing through our crushers so that the material coming into the hopper and then into the intake hose is a slurry, a liquid mud. 
the more water, the better going through this thing. So very, very high percentage of water versus rock. As much as we can get, more water, the better coming in. And it is falling down inside the machine, going down into that drum as well. So inside the drum, we have processing water being sprayed in. And we also have a slurry of water and rock, well, mud, crush, going into the drum. And yes, our drum, because the motor is spinning really fast. So there's lots of things going on inside the drum. And that is where the magic happens. Let's go inside and see what happens inside the drum. Okay, let's look at the components inside this drum. Right there, hard to see because it's kind of dark in there, but right there is where this slurry, the material, comes in, right at the bottom of the drum. There's a plate down there right at the bottom that that slurry is falling onto. That plate is spinning. The slurry falls onto that plate. And because it's spinning so fast, the centrif centrifugal force, the force pushing outwards, is going to take that slurry and push it up that ramp. That little, it's kind of a pink color here, that ramp up to the edge of the wall. Okay, so the material... You can see well, a rock right now. <laughs> that material, no, the powdery material that's in here is going to hit that ramp and it's going to start climbing the wall. Because of the force forcing outwards, it's going to start climbing up that wall. Now, not only the force, also the fact that there's so much water being pushed into the bottom of this unit that the water is filling up and trying to get out and centrical force is flinging it out. So it is climbing with the with the rock, climbing, climbing, climbing up this wall. And then it's going to start climbing up the ramp and over those wrestles. Okay, as the water and, and mud climbs up over those riffles right there, it starts traveling over top of the riffles just like it would in a sluice box, bumping up and over them, Heavy stuff falls into them, lighter stuff travels over the surface. And this is where the high gravity comes into it. The higher the density of material, the more chance it's going to fall into the bottom of those riffles. Now, do you remember that processing water I talked about earlier? It hasn't come into use yet. Well, the processing water is coming in at the bottom of each of those riffles. There is little tiny ports right in the very bottom of each riffle that shoot water, shoot little jets of water through the material that's falling into the riffles. And this creates what's known as a fluid bed in the bottom of each riffle. Keeps the material loose, open, lots of gaps for heavy things like gold to fall down through and make their way into the bottom of each riffle. So the combination of the tub spinning really fast, creating an artificial high, high gravity, the water flowing over the riffles just like you would have in a sluice box, and water being jetted into the bottom of each groove, creating fluid beds, creating lots of room for heavy material like gold to fall into each riffle, creates the perfect environment for capturing the finest of fine gold. And that is why fine gold recovery is so amazing on a gravity concentrator or a centrifugal concentrator. Now, the tailings, the stuff that is flowing up over top of each riffle is just being flung over the top of the tub. It comes up over this edge and just goes woohoo, flying off. It hits, let's get out here, it hits this rubber out the side, falls down into the bottom, and out, ooh, adjust the light, out the discharge port, and in our case, all the way down through our little safety sluice and into our tailings pond. The good stuff is staying in the drum, and it stays in the grooves in the drum until we tell the machine to stop spinning. When the machine stops spinning, 
we can force water into the grooves from the inside here. That little pipe, you see that uh, galvanized pipe there, has little ports, little holes in it that spray into each of the grooves. And we just slowly turn the drum, not enough to create artificial gravity, just enough to rinse out each of those grooves with the jets of water. And the combination of a little bit of water still coming out of the ports in the bottom of the groove and water spraying in from that pipe rinses everything from those grooves back into the bottom of the tub. And now this is going to be a hard thing to see. So this is a very tough one to see. That there's a groove between that pink rubber and the black plate on the bottom. It's a groove that's about an eighth inch wide. And during rinsing, the material that falls down into the bottom of the bowl is falling down and going out to that groove. It goes down through the bottom into the bottom of a secondary tub that's around the first tub. And we can't really get you a good shot of that because it's all enclosed. Now, some people might ask why the material, when it's going in spinning, isn't going down in that groove. And that's just because the centrifugal action is spinning so hard and so fast that when the material falls on that black plate and gets flung over to the side, it's going to get flung up. It's, there's no chance of it going down at that point because the centrifugal action is just so great. So nothing falls down there. It all climbs up the edge at that point. Once it stops spinning and you rinse, everything falls into the bottom. Then it falls in that groove that's between the pink and the black. It goes into the bottom of the main drum. Ooh, that drum there. You can sort of see that gap between the spinning part and the stationary part of that drum right there. It's just a vessel at that point. It goes into the bottom of that vessel, gets collected, and let's go around here comes out that port right there into your collection bucket, which is missing at the moment. Usually I have a bucket down here. And that's the good stuff. That's the cons coming out the bottom. And that inner tub is designed so it doesn't keep any material, that all the material flushes out that port nice and perfectly clean. Now there are animations on how that whole process works inside one of these uh, inside one of these machines online, but I wanted you to see it in the actual machine itself. See those components and try to get a good idea of what's inside there and what it's doing. The spinning of that drum is creating a very high artificial gravity. The water jets in the bottom of those riffles are creating a fluid bed. The fine, fine slurry passing up and over those riffles and over that fluid bed is dropping off all the fine, fine gold into those grooves, letting all of the lighter material, all the tailings, flow over the top and out the discharge. The good stuff is kept in the drum until you stop it spinning, at which point it rinses and washes down into the collection bucket below. That is the functionality of the Icon I-150, in a nutshell. A very, very, very large nutshell. So I hope I explained that well enough so you have a good idea of what goes on internally in that Icon there. I'm going to do a second video here real soon on the using of the machine. I'm going to go through the user manual and just go through the procedure as they lay it out and show you all the steps in running this Icon. The first one here is just sort of the general, why does it work? What does it do? What's inside that box? Hopefully that's helpful for all you guys out there. And if you are interested in one of these machines, make sure you contact Dave at 911 Metallurgist and tell him you saw it on Dan Hurd's YouTube channel. Bye!